Hello, Rhonda. Hi, Lulu. So happy to interview you again. Yes, it's La very nice, twice. Yes, last time we had a great time, obviously, like mm -hmm. many people, and I had said it this last time, but in 2007, 2006, I should say, with The Secret, I was uh, totally blown away by the law of attraction and started applying it in my own life. And millions of people starting apply, started back then to apply it. You have produced it, um, uh, this, this great movie and this book that was sold to millions and millions of, of in different languages all around the world. And it was a, a big success. Yeah. So yeah. before going into your latest, uh, uh, co-creation let's say which is the manifest manifestation cards uh, uh, with uh, beyond words and that is also actually in France um, hence this interview that will be translated in yes, French yes. Um, we'll go into details with the cards but first I just want to get the overview for the people that don't know the law of attraction or that might have a misunderstanding about it could you just say how you view the law of attraction or how it even has evolved for you since? Yes, uh, I would be happy to do that. I, um, Whenever I describe it, it's always in a different way every single time. So okay. um, first of all, we create our, re our reality. We create our life actually moment by moment through the law of attraction. And so we create it through our thoughts and through our thoughts only. Our emotions play a part in it because our emotions have a lot of energy and they energize our thoughts, accelerate our thoughts to manifest. But what we think is what we will experience in our life. And so instead of thinking about the things that you don't want, you just need to start to train your mind to think about the things you do want which is thinking positively right negatively is thinking about what you don't want and then your life will completely change mm. and so uh, yes go ahead yeah no no i think we'll go into even greater detail with the different cards because there's this deck of cards that just came out that allows us to be in this motion and be in this energy of manifesting and remembering remind ourselves of all those principles so i think it's great that you have done that um so we'll go even in greater details later thoughts are energy okay. you're saying and there's three steps to manifesting can you remind us what are those three steps Oh, good for you. Um, our, the three steps that we give in the secret are ask, which is getting clear about what you want. Believe that you already have what you That's want. That's a big one. Yeah. It's the big one. It's the main one. And when you believe that you already have it, you will receive it. So it's ask, believe, receive. And so the moment that you fully believe you already have it, it will manifest. It's just that simple. So then you have to play kind of games um, to have yourself, make yourself believe that you have it already. And why do we have to believe that we have it already? The reason that we do is because for the law of attraction, there's no time. There's no time for any law, actually. Yeah. All of the laws of physics, they're operating now 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 you know not in the past not in the future so and it's so, like you you would say that past present future are coexisting yes exactly and if we if, if, for example this is how sensitive law of attraction is if we are wanting to manifest i don't know a, a pair of sneakers that we really really want to get and uh and so we're we are thinking about those sneakers as something we're going to have in the future, then we will attract always having to have the sneakers, needing the sneakers in the future, right? They'll never come. We, yeah, we have to see it as now. And because the law of attraction does not care one bit whether it is real or imagined. So how so do you explain, uh, sorry, how do you explain then that sometimes it's even better than what we have thought? when it manifests yeah, I, yeah it often is that way yeah. it has been for me most most certainly but i always make sure that when i want to manifest something that i always say or more i always 
add the words. I never, like, we tend to limit our lives down to like the size of a pea when we are the most powerful beings in the universe. And so I am always breaking limitations. So if I think that I might need um, X amount of time for something, uh, not to manifest, but X amount of time for something, then I will say or less, you know, or if I'm wanting to manifest, um, uh, if somebody wanted to manifest money, I would never say, uh, I would never like visualize, I want to manifest $10,000. That is so limiting. You have to say or more, or more. Yeah. So let's so. go straight into one of these cards. I mean, the third step, I don't know if you mentioned it, but it's receiving. Receiving and that is, that's when it manifests. Yeah, it's receiving. And for receiving, I mean, for receiving, you need to feel good because something isn't going to manifest when you're feeling bad. You know, it's going to manifest when you're feeling good. So, yeah. Okay. I can go into that, but that's kind of frequencies and yeah. So you were you were mentioning we're gonna we're gonna go more into I mean okay. into this topic obviously with the cards. I think it's it's because yeah. I'm I'm excited with those cards. So you were born a creator. That's one of them. Yeah. Can you comment yeah. on that? You were starting to speak about that. The the global yes. picture of who we really are, and we don't even know yet. I mean, we're just starting to discover. We're just starting, yeah. I mean, we, we're appearing as an individual person, but that is the smallest part of us. We, we, we are actually, we were never born. The, the conscious, consciousness of us was never born and never dies. It's, it's completely eternal. But certainly the body is born and the body, the, the body ends. But we are far greater than that. And so it's that power that we are the, the, there is actually no other power in the universe than the power that we are. No other. There's just one power, and that's us. And so that's why that's why we can manifest things when we have focus and we believe that we have it. Is because the all power that we are is manifesting that. You're saying like another card is we are eternal beings. So basically that's related to that. That's related to that. Yeah. Never born and never, never die. And that applies to every, I want to say, not only every human being that appears, but every living being, everything, our pets, our everything. There's no, and we already know that energy can't be created or destroyed. If we look at it from an energetic level, it can't be created or destroyed. It just transforms. There's like, there's just no death in existence. And we are just, afraid of dying. I know, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's go into the next one. Uh, be aware of your power. So this is this is owning it, knowing it, feeling it. How would you describe it? So that because we yeah. were, we can't even cope with it intellectually. So how can we be aware of our power? Are there practices, or what would you recommend so that we get a, well, a glimpse of it? Even I think it's always if somebody is beginning, I think it's always good to start manifesting something small because then they when they're manifesting something small then that will help their belief factor they will begin to see the power that they have and it's a really good idea to choose something that when it manifests you absolutely know without a doubt that you created that i remember we got wow. a story from a guy and he wanted to manifest this particular feather which he made up in his mind the colors blue and all these dots and all of this kind of thing. And he flew to New York for a, a business meeting and he was walking into this high rise building and he just happened to look down on the ground and there was the feather, exactly as he imagined it. So, of course, he knew without a doubt hmm. that he had manifested that. So I think to choose something, you know, that you know for sure know, um, that you did it, and so starting mm. with smaller things, car parks, cup of coffee, 
all of those kinds of things. Um, even like, even like a, a, I don't, I don't know with the currency with euros, but you know, X amount of euro, a, a note of euro that you want to manifest and. Um, how do you I, know, I, like you said earlier, past, present, future are coexisting. So how do we know that we're not getting that thought of that manifestation that we want because it already exists on some levels? You know, it, it seems does, like the more we practice, the more we kind of fine tuning more easily between all those different temporal lines. Well, it's really interesting, interesting that you no one's ever noticed that before, noticed that before. But. When I said before, nothing can be created or destroyed, right? Nothing can be created. That means everything already exists. Yes. It already exists. So, so that means every thought already exists. That means every, every possibility every, exists. Every possibility. Every. So we might as well. Every... Yeah, we might as well claim it. <laughs> exactly. Right. And we get this, we think that, oh, it's going to be hard to manifest. For example, a car, it's a big deal. It costs a lot of money. You know, that's going to take a long time to manifest that. But it all already exists. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the thought of it. So it already exists. So you're right. Claim it. You know, drive the car in your mind, be in the car and do all of those things and feel the car. And I mean, it's that It's that easy. I would say the difference between now and when I first discovered the mm -hmm. secret is that manifesting is way easier even than when I what when still we what still secret. gets on your way? Is there something? Have you discovered something that most human or you it gets on your way for not manifesting instantly? I think uh, for I think for a lot of people, they have beliefs like they don't deserve it, they didn't work hard enough for it, or like one of the things, for example, that I think so many people have, and if I mention this, then then the people listening or, or, or watching will be able to let this belief go, but most people have the belief that the only way that money can come to them is through their work, mm -hmm. through their job. Mm -hmm. And you know, the minute that you believe that, mm. you stop the universe from s delivering money to you in all kinds of ways. Mm. Like there are unlimited ways that money can come into each of our lives. But if we think the only way that money can come to us is if we is is through our job, then yes. you know, I, I, we use the genie. Your wish is my command. You know, whatever you think, your wish is my command. Whatever you think, the wish is my command. So. So we need to break those beliefs that don't serve us and instead believe that money can come to us in unlimited, unexpected ways. Yes. Um, actually, if, if, if like since everything is coexisting at the same time, there is just unlimited amount of money. We might yes, as well certainly. claim it again. So exactly. <laughs> change, change your thoughts, change the future. So this is it, yeah. as you were saying earlier, I'm showing the card, another yes. one. Yes. Uh, at the end of every day, before you go to sleep, think through the events of the day. If any events or moment didn't go the way you want, replay them in your mind the way mm -hmm. you want them to go. Tell us more about that. Yes, I really love this. This was, um, I discovered this through a teacher, Neville Goddard, and he called it the pruning shears of revision. And I, I really, I really love it uh, because you just take something in the day that didn't go the way that you wanted. Well, the, the difficulty is if it didn't go the way that you wanted and, and, and you didn't let it go, you know, completely let it go emotionally and mentally, then we've, we've stored it in our subconscious and it's going to yeah. attract a similar situation, right? So, so we need to, uh, we need to let that energy go out of our body. So by going back over the day and seeing something that didn't go the way that we wanted, and then we replay it, not only are we preventing it from happening again in the future, we are actually giving the law of attraction something that we want. And so it's really fantastic thing. To, it's a really fantastic practice to do. Really, really great. Yeah, yeah, we can do that with our past since it's existing right now. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. impacting our future and our present. Yeah. Uh -huh. There is only really the present then. 
There is. There's no past and there's no future. And how do we know that there's no past and no future? Well, for a start, you can't even get a little toe into the past. Like we can't step into the past. Oh, excuse me, I'll just go back to yesterday. And likewise, we absolutely cannot step into the future. And all that ever exists is right now. And I think that is also one of the tricky things for human beings because they're living in the future in their mind. But the problem with that, with law of attraction, they will keep attracting the same thing in the future that never exists and it won't ever yeah. come into life now. I have a manifestation question since it's called manifestation cards. Yeah. Is there any other better way than after actually having done some work on ourselves, liberating some old belief, liberating some trauma, start to sit in the space of nothingness, let's say, and just let the, the, the manifestation come to us instead of imposing them mentally. You know what I mean? Like we have a tendency to yeah. want to fix things in, and, and we, we want do. to manifest sometimes for the wrong reason whereas there's something really even more effortless that seems to come from the source for us there is yes and which is what i do these days rather than yeah i'm i'm i just feel that the universe and life will give it to me with way more bows and whistles if i don't get in the way of it and and that's because but our imagination and our mind is actually is limited, except uh, consciousness and the universe, consciousness or the universe is completely unlimited. And so we can just by feeling good, just by appreciating, being grateful and living our life like that, living our life in the present and not believing negative thoughts and getting caught up in anything like that. I mean, oh my gosh, mm. life will just, it'll be an avalanche of goodness and riches in life. And so, and riches in every area, you know, riches in health and relationships and not just, yeah. you know, not just financial. So I was talking to a man yesterday and he was actually featured in one of the books hero and he's a multi multi billionaire and he gave away a billion dollars you know <laughs> he was telling me that Great. he gave away a billion dollars and you know he he contacted me when the secret came out and a lot of people did but just i don't know for some reason i just responded to him and he wanted to tell me that this is how he had been successful that he did, he did everything that I talked about in the secret book. And so we've stayed in contact ever since. He does gratitude every single day. He's like, he just describes his life is just, is, is just incredible. His life is so beautiful. When he's on the phone with me, he's always talking about how beautiful the, the sunset is that he's seeing. And I mean, he's just raising he's his just, frequency. It, Honestly, he's a what he's like the perfect example of living the secret. Absolutely perfect example. And his life is incredible. He puts no limitations on anything. Yeah. There's so, one of the cards, I don't think I have it here from the selected, but it's called uh, Gratitude is the Riches. Riches. Yes. Riches. Yes, gratitude is riches and um what is property? Because uh there is yes. there are several other complaint ones that i have is, here that... gratitude is riches complaint is poverty yeah that's one of the things that yeah. gratitude is a great multiplier let's talk about that one for a second yeah okay um, so in terms of law of attraction remembering that for law of attraction it is seizing every thought and it 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 doesn't care whether that thought is here or, or whether that's a real thought or whether it's not, whether you're fabricating it or doesn't care, it will fulfill it. That's that's what it will do. It's just like a giant photocopying machine. And it will it will send what you're thinking back into your life as the circumstances of your life. And so with gratitude, if you're being grateful for just what you have, even if it's not much, or just by the law of attraction, 
has automatically set free the forces to bring you more. You know, it, it's just, it, it's the way that it happens. And it's that I just think it's the easiest way to see yeah. law of attraction. Because for a start, when you do gratitude, you feel really, the more that you do it, you feel really, really good. Your heart kind of melts, the mind stops going crazy. And and then already you're in the most incredible manifesting place because the way to manifest fast is through joy, the highest frequency there is. Mm. That then you're just going to manifest almost instantaneously mm. because you're in joy. And so gratitude has you let go of resistance, mm -hmm. and law of attraction will just multiply whatever you're being grateful for. So you can be grateful for things you don't have. Yeah. There's you know, another card, happiness attracts happiness. So this is what we're talking yeah. about. More of that. Yeah. The more we emit that, the more we receive that. Yes. Yeah. So every moment, each one of us is, vi we're vibrating energy and we're vibrating at a frequency. And how do we know what frequency we're vibrating at? We can tell by how we're feeling. And so, but, and so for example, if, If we're feeling sad, well, sadness attracts more sadness and anger attracts more anger. And we know that something goes wrong in the day and we get angry and then more things go wrong. And so anger attracts more anger. Happiness attracts more happiness. Joy attracts more yeah. joy. Yeah. Have you found so a lot of people talk about how powerful the sound is and the universe is being created through sound? Is there such a sound for you that works? Uh, great to to be in those frequencies is it maybe sacred mantras or maybe it's songs or a type of music that you personally listen to to bring you to I, higher I, vibration and switch maybe sometimes to bigger joy I definitely use music to um to feel amazing i these days i feel pretty incredible most of the time i've kind of stabilized it um a higher happiness higher level of happiness earlier i was a little bit like a roller coaster mm -hmm. um but just by by persisting with it and letting go all of the time and not letting emotions bother me you kind of sit at joy but now i've forgotten your question because whether really like question. what kind of music would you listen to or sound to bring yeah. your frequency higher like yeah examples? so i Yeah, so I do, I, I will listen to music and I often give that advice to people. If if there is a song or a piece of music that you cannot stay still to, like that just fills your body and affects every cell in your body, then if you're feeling low or you've woken up a bit grumpy or whatever, listen to that song mm -hmm. and let that song lift your frequency so you don't go out into the day grumpy because you go out into the day grumpy guess what you got it's not gonna is. work <laughs> you're gonna attract <laughs> grumpy people and grumpy reasons grumpy to be grumpy people. yeah rude people and oh yeah yes so, mm. um oh just a second oui stella attends ma puce tu peux monter s'il te plaît oui attends maman elle a presque fini d'accord tu peux tu peux juste jouer encore un petit peu maman elle a presque fini bah vas-y mange Attends, les raisins, ils sont sur la table, dans la cuisine. Just one second, oh my god. Just one second. Hold it there. Ok, we're good. Um... Okay? Yes, she is. She was. She's hungry. Uh, that's her way I to get that. attention <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Let's talk about this card. Your heart is the seat of your power. Oh, I know that. You just asked me a question. Is there a word I use, by the way? There is a word that I use. Yeah. A word is love. Yeah. Love. I will try. I will chant that word, yeah. Love, love, That's love? It. In, in, in English or in another language? In, in English, yeah. It doesn't matter which language, you, you as long as you know what that feels like. Um, but that's the word that 
that's the word that means so much to me and that's the word that I feel the frequency of that when we create something new and I really, really send that into everything we create. Wonderful. Yeah. The, your heart is the seat of your power. So this is it. You're, you're talking about love right now in the word love. You're connecting to the, to the love, to greater love, I guess, to, to the love uh, yeah. that there is a source, the divine love, the agape love, maybe even. Yes, true, true. And what do I say on that card? Because I can't remember. Uh, you say your, your heart is the seat of power. Here's a way to instantly stop a downward negative spiral. Focus on your heart. Breathe in deeply, oh, yeah. keeping I'll your breathe. focus on your heart and concentrate on the yeah. feeling of love in your heart. Breathe out while yeah. keeping your focus and feeling the love in your heart. Repeat this yes. total seven times. Yes. Okay. So heart breathing is a really big deal. Like I've, um, through heart breathing, I've stopped a dog from having a stroke or, yeah. So um, it takes a little bit of practice to get the feeling. So we're, we're just like looking at this, this central area to feel our heart. And the way that I learned to do it was to imagine breathing in and breathing out that my breath was going in through the heart and out through the heart. So I closed my eyes and I would breathe in and then I would breathe out and just be focusing on the heart. And you can get to a point where you just feel like all of this tingling joy all through your heart. And then, yeah, I focus on love and then sending that out. And that was something that um, I did every single day when we were making the secret and I was having my morning coffee and I would do that and I would just send it out to the yeah. world. It seems like the heart is like a portal. I mean, like each chakra, yeah. I guess, are portals, but this one yeah. is quite particular, no? It's very, yeah, it is. I think so too. And uh and it's a beautiful thing when it, I, I think the Heart Math Association, who are here in California, called it when the heart gets all tingly, it's like a crystallization that's taking place. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. Because if you got to that point, then what you need to do is think about what you want to manifest, because you'll manifest it really fast. Wow, <laughs> thank you for saying that. Well, it's beautiful um create your tomorrow today so some powerful rituals before going to bed you're saying on this card every night replay the good moments of the day and think of the next day and intend what's what's the best day of your life yes it's really important to that it is going to be the best day of your life sorry yes yeah it's really important to choose you know we need to make decisions and we need to choose what we want to happen in our lives so just to wake up and go into the day and not have made any choice, what happens then is you're going to experience other people's choices and they might not be good. Yep. <laughs> Generally, they're not. Yeah. Generally, they're not. So you need to say, you just need to say, you're the all power. You can say what kind of day you're going to have. And, um, and so to do it the night before, you know, going back over the day and looking for the best, like kind of the best thing that happened that day or the good moments of the day kind of has your heart melt a bit, which then makes you way more powerful for setting intentions mm. for the next day. But everybody, set intentions. Set intentions before you go to the dentist, before you go to the doctor, before you have a test, before you do exams, you so know, powerful. before you get married, before you go to dinner. You know, set intentions before you drive the car. And I love there is something with access consciousness and they have this little sentence too that says, um, how does it get any better than this? I love it oh. when I manifest something to keep on opening oh. it up instead of, oh my God, this is yeah. so great. And this is how good as it gets. Or I don't know what sentence we put out there at that time. Yeah, yeah. Topping it. <laughs> Yeah, topping it, exactly, limiting it. Ah! <laughs> Instead of keeping on opening this beautiful yeah. space. But then at some point we get a little bit anxious. No, it's so big and it seems out of control and we keep on manifesting bigger. And did you felt already this incomfort of, oh my God, this is it, it's manifesting. And all of a sudden you, it keeps on opening, opening, opening. And all of a sudden you, it's kind of like climaxing to this level where it's too much. Yes, yeah, certainly with the secret, I, I felt that because it was just so massive, um, so massive at the time when it went around the world. I, I never kind of felt it was too much though, because or the only thing that I, I needed to rein in was the media, 
you know, because it was just every radio program in the world, every newspaper, every television show oh. wanted me on it. And I wasn't interested in, do in doing that. I wasn't interested in having, trying to prove anything. The secret was sharing what I knew was the absolute truth for those people who wanted it. And I wasn't out to go proving anything with any journalists or, so I was very, very particular, but I had had a media background. So I had good training to just do Oprah and, you know, just do That was things. a safe one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a good, good card. Oprah card. Fine. <laughs> yeah, um, card, exactly. There, there is one here, uh, just a few more. Um, everything is on track always. Yeah. That's a oh, good yes. thing to remind ourselves, huh? Yes, yes. It's one of the questions that if I'm meeting some new people, I can just about guarantee you that they will say, can I ask you a question? Oh, my gosh, what about the world, the current state of the world and everything that's happening? And, and it is really challenging, you know. But I've listened to recordings of the 1930s where teachers are saying, I know it's really hard times. The world is in a terrible state at the moment. And, and so it's actually no different than it was back then. And, and when something's happened already, what we need to appreciate and understand and accept is that that was the way that it was going to happen because it's already happened. So everything is on track and always, 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 and none of us die. And that's the thing, you know, to, be, to yeah. understand, right? When you say everything is on track, none of us die. And it's even greater that it's even greater than that, but no no one dies. So say how um, how say say what is even greater than that. Ah uh, <laughs> that okay, all right, that no one is hurt or harmed. Ever. Yeah. Ever. Ultimately, ever. So it's an illusion we have. Mm -hmm. There seems yeah. to be quite a lot of illusions we're having. Oh, there's a lot. <laughs> and they're very convincing, aren't they? They are. They're they so, feel real. They're so, yeah, they're so convincing. But I just think, you know, I, certainly every single one of us will have times in our life of suffering, right? But through that suffering, we come out the the other end and we have learned a lot we're wiser we're way better for it we're far more compassionate yes to other people than we were before it occurred like if you have if you lose somebody very close to you from that moment on you will be a strength to other people that are going through that so um so all of those things you know help to shape us and and give us experience i i remember this um my mentor a mentor of mine from canary islands said to me when i was going through a really 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 challenging event and he said to me god never gives us anything that we don't have the ability to overcome mm -hmm. and he said you've been given this because you can overcome it and yeah it was just like well, yeah. breathe into yeah. that <sighs> Yes, um, I, 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 there's this other one, prosperity is your birthright and every day thinks thoughts of abundance, be happy now, be grateful. I mean, I feel we have already spoken about that one, but this is a good one to yeah. pick up here and there. Yeah, Obviously, every, everything, like we, we, you know, if we look at it from a consciousness level, we own everything in the world. Like we're incredibly wealthy because we, everything is ours. Like there's, there is on a spiritual level, there's only one one being. So that means that absolutely everything, everything belongs to us. But aside from that, on the earth level and on the physical level, um, prosperity is ours and the own, it is naturally ours. And everybody would be prosperous and there's no limit to that prosperity. It's not as though only some people can have it like it currently is and others can't. No, there's, there's absolutely no limit to it. And so why isn't everybody prosperous? because the majority of people are thinking about a lack of money rather than prosperity mm. Mm. right yes they're focusing on 
not enough, what they don't have, you know, that they don't deserve something if they didn't, you know, nearly kill themselves working to get it. Um, so all of those kinds of beliefs, you know, prevent the prosperity from naturally pouring in. I mean, we are the ones that are stopping right. it. Right, and, and mm. prosperity is not an end in itself, neither. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Like, I think the answer for anybody, and I, and I say it in the sacred book, and it's just like so, so simple, is if you could just choose to be happy now, no matter what, you do your best to be happy each day, set an intention. I'm going to be as happy as I can be tomorrow. And you get yourself stabilized on that high frequency. Honestly, you do not have to visualize or imagine anything. It'll, it'll just all come. So you just know, pick, a, pick a card, pick a card every day, every morning. That's, that's the ritual that you propose to us every day. Pick a card. Yeah and put it there, yeah, exactly. set it there, and focus on that the whole day. Exactly, exactly, because that will stop our mind from taking us down a track that sabotages our life, and instead will put us on a track that enhances our life. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Rhonda. So exciting oh, to have you, you today. Thank you so much yeah, for being available yeah. and, uh, and shining your love and light, as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lulu. Much love. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, yes, uh, this. Uh, please share this video if you liked it. Obviously, it's in French too, so it can go all around the world to many, many countries. And uh, sending you much love and see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.